we will have now the comparison between impacted as planned method and time impact analysis method we will start with the impacted as planned analysis it is a prospective method which means at a particular point of time I'm showing the forecasted impact so the impact did not happen yet but I am potentially I'm showing the prospective impact so this is pro prospective method there is no consideration for schedule updates and the contemporary project status ahead or behind I'm using only the baseline schedule so for the impacted as planned analysis I'm using the baseline program of work which means there is no consideration for the current project status so let's say for example I have one schedule update I did really good progress I am the contractor and I did really good progress and it's showing me that the forecasted completion date is one month earlier than the project completion of the project so if there is one event from the client right now so actually there is no impact right now because I have one month of buffer and the current status is showing me that I, I will finish earlier than the project completion date so there will be no impact but for the impacted as planned analysis I am showing the event on the baseline anyway and I will just show my entitlement so there is no consideration for schedule update there is no consideration of the contemporary uh, project uh, records which is the recent schedule updates no consideration for contractors delays so if I'm using the baseline schedule and there is one event from the client side and I want to uh, apply for extension of time because of this event so what about the contractors delay so for whatever the client is delaying me at any point in the future I'm going back to the baseline I'm doing my assessment but also the contractor is delaying the project so why don't you do that why don't you go back to the baseline schedule and also show the contractors delay people will argue because why would I do that you know I'm the contractor why should I you know expose myself but it doesn't mean that this is the best way to do it you know because if you don't want to do it someone else will do it for you because I have seen many people I met a lot of engineers who will say oh I'm going to do this because it will support me in my claim and uh, this will serve me in my entitlement so but it is actually wrong a method because you have to do it properly there are arbitrators so from the client end they will have someone maybe qualified to review the claim arbitrator maybe will review the claim and also in court so if you don't want to show this information if you try to work around it if you will not use a proper method correct method someone else will do it for you so be careful embedded as planned analysis it is against the client it is not fair because the contractor will only show the client delay and it will not take into consideration the contemporary records but it is that's why it is weak actually so I do not recommend it it is the second popular method after the time impact analysis So for the impacted as planned analysis if you will use this method so let's say we have one activity which is the false ceiling the early start date is 1st of April 2021 baseline late start date is 15th of April 2021 the impacted start date is 15th of May 2021 so basically I have 15 days of float that's why the late start date is 15th of April and because the client delayed me for one event so I actually started 15th of May one month late behind the latest start date so if I have 30 days behind the latest start date it will automatically give me total float negative 30 because we are using the baseline schedule so the impacted start date is actually the actual start date but I'm using impacted because it is related to the claim vocabulary so it is actually the actual start date but I'm using impacted start date so because we are using the baseline schedule and we are using the impacted as planned analysis so the negative 30 will be the whole EOT entitlement so here I'm having the baseline early start date and I have one delay 
event from the client it actually started before the early start date so it did not affect the activity yet but what happens is after I receive, after the contractor receives the design change from client, then the information were incomplete. So the contractor raised RFI, we received the complete information and then we resubmitted the engineering and finally we had material delivery. So the any event can actually start to way before the early start date and you can still claim for it because the, the the consequences of this change will last longer and it will violate or it will go beyond the latest start date so because of the material delivery occurred here on 15th of may so it is one lay one month behind the latest start date okay let's go the time impact analysis method it's also prospective method as baseline. I am forecasting the impact. The impact did not happen yet, but I am forecasting how the impact will look like. In this case, we have consideration for schedule updates and contemporary project status. Because we are using the schedule update. So the only difference between the plan, the impacted as planned and the time impact analysis is which program up or which program you are using so for the impacted as planned you are using baseline schedule in all your analysis for time impact analysis you are using schedule update how you're gonna choose the schedule update we will talk later in this course how you're gonna choose which schedule update with which is better serve you so there is consideration for contractor delay because if I'm using schedule update it will show the project status you know no matter who is responsible of delay we are not talking about delay responsibility now with a schedule update any activity can be delayed and drive the longest path and the project completion date so all delays in the program it can be client side or contractor side so there is consideration actually for contractors delay because I'm using a schedule update this is the same example from last slide the full ceiling the same dates early and late and also impacted the start date the same also consequences here this is a representation of the consequences of this event but in the last slide we had total float negative 30 and it was the same as EOT entitlement because it's a baseline program but for schedule update we have to check this loop so after we do the exercise, we insert the event into a schedule update. We check the longest path. If this event is driving the longest path, there will be AOT entitlement. Okay, so the event does not drive the longest path. Then we have to check the impacted longest path first. Another event drives the longest path. So I'm talking here about one example, one delay in false ceiling because of the client side, but it can be two or even more. It can have AOT claim. It can have more than one event. So when I'm inserting all of these delay events into the program, only maybe one, one event will drive the longest path. So maybe I, in, I had also another event related to block work or maybe to MAP. So maybe the one related to MAP is driving the longest path. So I have negative float from the false ceiling event, but it is not driving the project completion. So the MAP is driving the project completion. So after I inserted any event, so I check the impacted longest path. If the event, another event is driving the longest path, still we have EOT entitlement. Because in this case, I am having the impact from the MAP event. So if another event does not drive the longest path, so if so after I did the exercise here, the event does not drive the longest path, then I checked it. And there is no other event driving the longest path. So there is no EOT entitlement in this case. So just to wrap up, impacted as planned and time impact analysis, they are almost similar. The only major difference is in the impacted as planned i'm using baseline schedule in the time impact analysis i'm using a schedule update 
and because I'm taking into consideration in case of time impact analysis, because I'm taking into consideration the uh, contractor's delay and also the schedule update uh, ahead or behind. So that's why it's stronger because it's using the contemporary records. And also one last thing, there is consideration for schedule changes because in the baseline program of work, if I am dealing with the impacted as planned method, when we develop the baseline schedule, we typically have a lot of assumptions which will be maintained or changed at later stage in the project, right? So normally you have to maintain the logic, remove some relationship, add some relationship, uh, because you know you need to maintain practical sequence, you know, and um, so there are some changes in the program. So this is how you maintain the schedule. Impacted as planned, I'm using the same baseline schedule with the same assumptions without anything, even though Maybe things will change. Maybe I'm changing the work sequence on site. But for the time impact analysis, I'm using a schedule update. And when I developed and submitted this schedule update, I did some schedule changes. So I already incorporated some practical work into my schedule changes. That's why overall time impact analysis, it has all this strength points. That's why we will explain it in this course and that's why it is the strongest method in construction projects if you want to learn more about delay analysis you can join our course delay analysis mastery visit www.smartpmtraining.com or you can register immediately at the link below the video